shut up compressor. Ahoy everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part two of the 132nd Intruder build. Now, while the Steinal Res sets up on the fuselage and the intakes, and we get ready for another go at dealing with the rivets and various things like that on the fuselage, I wanted to go ahead and talk about the wings. Now, in my What's Next video, I mentioned the really awesome by awesome, I mean not, not awesome, design of the wing fold area. So essentially here you have wing. Now this is the inner port wing. You have the, essentially the bulkhead for the wing fold right here attached to a pylon. I don't know why there's a square hole in the pylon, but there is. Um, reference photos don't show it, so I'll probably be erasing that. But this just basically press fits in there. It will be glued eventually. Then you get this little dinky ass pin. Stick it right in there. It fits well at least. Outer wing, same deal. Yoink. Just like that. And then on top of that, this is where it gets fun. It's holding this together while you make it fit. This guy... drops in there just like that. And that's basically how it goes. Now, the obvious problem with this entire plan is that if you just let the wing hang out on this one thing, it's really floppy. In fact, it's a massive failure point. Even if you kind of come in here and glue everything, I still would be very wary picking up the plane by, say, out here. So, my original plan was to open up the wings and build some truss work in here to support something much beefier. And so that way, ideally, I could be able to just come in and just plug this in whenever I wanted and otherwise leave it basically uh, missing the outer wings so I could display it or fit it in the display cabinet a bit easier. Well, there's a problem with that plan. And that problem is five years ago, my dumbass glued the wings. <laughs> so, at least the port wing, I think the starboard wing is still sitting pretty. But the port wing is glued. So, Getting in here especially is impossible because I glued this into place, at least on the bottom. I mean, it's a little bit loose up top, but it's glued in. So, yeah. Fun times that, huh? So now my choices are either build it with the wings folded which involves this bunch of bullshit right here, which is super floppy. Now, I will give Trumpeter credit, they have a piece. This guy right here, I believe this is U4 or U3, something like that. And what it does aside from being super, super fussy and fragile is it basically sits right there. Come on. So it basically sits like he this and helps locate this stupid triangle setup. Then you come in and do like that and blah, blah, blah and it's fragile and dinky. I might still opt for that, except when you look at the detail in here, well, that and the fact that I've already <laughs> cut off the top runs, 
Um, but when you look at the detail in here, if you look at the real thing, these little areas down here all have holes in them, and it'd be really cool to replicate that, but I don't have a way to drill it. So, my next plan is basically just to glue the damn thing, accept the width, and go to town, but I still want something stronger than this. So, this is not final by any stretch, but basically I took a piece of styrene tube, cut it to the same-ish width. This is a piece of 3mm Evergreen. I do not want it for the wing purposes because look at that, it is super bendy. But for testing and sizing and everything, it slides in here perfectly. It's that 3mm size I need. And check this out. So we can put this in like this. Slides in there nicely. Got a whole lot more length sticking off the side than we do with the stock kit part. And voila. So with the addition of some tape, it shows that it does have a, a degree more rigidity. I think that will hold, especially once I get to my final solution, which this is not. But basically, this preserves some gluing area. It helps maintain that space in there that we need. And my final solution will be basically to keep, probably, this little plastic spacer bit right here. And inside of it, I'm still waiting for it to show up because Corona Apocalypse means that nothing shows up on time. I'm going to get some 3mm brass rod and run it right through the middle, just like that. And when it's 3mm, it will hold nicely right here. It will slide perfectly fitting through those holes. And this is even tube, but rod is much stiffer than this. And that will help give a lot of strength to the wing. I'm also contemplating, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet or not, though. Um, trying to add some additional stiffeners, maybe front and back. The challenge is that there aren't really that many connection points to play with, per se. I guess I've got these little areas where there are pins where things are supposed to sneak in, right? So like if you look, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so if you look right here at the back and right up here at the front, there are these two tiny little pins, right? And then if you look on this wing, on the outer wing, there's a corresponding hole right there and a corresponding hole right there. Now, those are small, yeah. Uh, definitely smaller than I would like to play with for this purpose. However, they do provide that sort of fore and aft stability, which will be pretty important as I go to get these things together. I mean, they do fit up, etc. So it's basically a matter of drilling holes and then measuring distances, and I happen to have quite a bit of one millimeter, etc. brass tubing that I can donate to that cause. So that is basically my plan at this point, uh, to drill those holes and wait for my three millimeter brass tube for the main spar, use the spacers, and then sink it all together. And I highly doubt it, but there is a very, very, very slight chance that this will fit tight enough that I can even consider just having it be its own thing. Okay, so after drilling, I think we're onto something. Look at that. That is literally just... two rods with not the best alignment and vague endpoints, but they sure do That, fir that front one's a bit dicey still. This back one, though... Sinks up wonderfully. Oh, 
only problem is it needs some sort of gluing because it has if it goes too far it pops out where the uh, <laughs> where the wingtip light is which is a challenge in and of itself but when everything fits up like this it provides a, a good amount of stability in the back there you can imagine providing a lot more once it's actually glued in place the front one, the challenge I'm having, and it's also, honestly, with the back one, is getting these things to line up like this. Like, I drilled these into matching holes, and they don't match. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's definitely potential here. But anyway, overall, this is looking very promising. You know, just turn here and drop this guy on top. I think once we add the brass tubing and we can finally come in and trim some of those pieces off a little bit more. The fit of this thing will not be an issue and everything will be happy. Anyway, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, I'm not as concerned about the wings anymore. Just have to wait for my big old brass rod to come in. So before I get too deep into the wings, Let's go ahead and fill these random pylon holes, which I swear to God, I have no idea why they're there. So this is just a strip of square styrene. Doesn't exactly fit, but it comes pretty damn close. So basically we're just gonna weld these damn things in place. I've actually got some ideas for the rest of it too, but let's get these first. Let's see if this is thin enough. Damn it is. This is my favorite tactic when I'm dealing with uh, weird gaps and I can actually make it work is just shimming and plugging the damn thing with styrene because it sands just like all the stuff that it's right next to. So basically, when we come out of this, all we're going to have to fill is just a little tiny corner up front. Okay, and while we let that set up, how about I show where we're at with the wings because something cool showed up today. I'm not done with everything I want to do. But I'm getting there. So this, like before, the new thing though, three millimeter carbon fiber rod. This thing is super strong. Nice and light. Yeah, we could have played with uh, stainless steel or brass or something like that, but where's the fun in that? It's just not quite the same. And then. Look at that, that is with no glue, nothing, just good old having carbon fiber in there, and it does not fucking move. Now, as great as this is, I think I'm still really wanting to strengthen it a little bit more. And to do that, I feel like the back is already in pretty good shape with this little one millimeter thing. I think up front, because when I had to cut the carbon fiber, I had a few rods left over. So I think I could probably get away with putting one. Doo -doo -doo. It's going to roll off. Putting one right there. So like just ahead of those little hinge things. If I can get that forward thing to sync up just so, like this, then flippin' sweet. But it will require 
getting these measurements pretty right because these other holes I drilled, they're all over the damn place. For right now, let's go ahead and these guys are setting up pretty good. Got a little indent right there, nothing too bad. This one is sitting just a tiny, tiny bit proud. It's funny when you look at reference photos of this thing, this pylon, there's not even a hint of this hole. Even those rivets aren't there, but I might leave those rivets just for a little bit of visual interest. You know, this is shallow enough that I might actually go with some putty instead of super glue. I need some tape so I can isolate the area because I don't want to get the shit everywhere. It doesn't... It dries so fast you almost have to pull it right out of the tube. Which is frustrating. thing is it stinks to high heaven too. Depending on how this stuff does here, I might use it for some spot treatments on the fuselage too where they need it. As much as I love my super red, waiting for it to set up is annoying. I'm going to let these set up for a few minutes, and we will be back to sand them. Okay, so I've given this a few minutes to dry. And just doing some gentle sanding before I remove the tape. So we still have a little ways to go. As you can see, it's got a... Definitely got a, an edge on it. As you can see, we're getting actual glinting off of a little bit of remaining filler material. It sucks to kind of start this big and go down. We don't want to have to fill it twice if we don't have to. Okay. Knock out the other one and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we can officially say goodbye to floppy wing bullshit. We now have a nice beefy wing and the only reason that we have any slop at all is because things just haven't been fully glued yet. But I mean, this is literally as far as it can bend. That's it. So let's walk through uh, what I did and all of that before I glue these things shut and we never see them again. On the inside of the wing fold, basically, you know, as, as you saw, we drilled out this hole here for happy fun time brass rod thing. I'm going to put this sort of crimped end from cutting it on the inside so it has a hard time falling out this way because if it did, it would just be lost inside the wing. And then up front here, Basically, all I did was I took a one millimeter hole and enlarged it to three millimeters and then attacked it with an X-Acto knife to give it a little bit of slop because otherwise the wing was kind of fit and weird. So then we have the main spar of carbon fiber that fits into that guy. And then we got this little one that was basically a leftover from cutting the full length of rod into the appropriate length for the wing. And these all fit. Let's go ahead and install them into this guy first. So 
These all fit into here just like this. Nice and strong. And you can see the flop still from this just not being glued in place. Okay, now all you do is take this I have to get it to seat. Just like so. And then voila, everything fits up. And again, just need to level it off just a little bit, glue it. Probably dump some epoxy down in here or something like this to uh, make sure that we got a nice, good, tight join on the underside. And that is it. So, a lot of angst for something that ended up being a pretty straightforward job. Okay, so it's time to finally commit and glue these wings together. And first up, we are mixing up some epoxy because we have a lot of non-styrene bits that are going in here that we want to hold nicely, but maybe not hold, you know, immediately. We want a little bit of time to work in there. So first things first, if you look back in here, you see this little square bit. That is where the brass rod or brass tube connects to. So I'm going to put a little bit of stuff back there. Since I cannot get down there with the epoxy because it's being stupid, we are going to do something even stupider. Okay, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> but CA down the hole, some accelerator in there just to speed it up so that we're not stuck holding it the whole damn time. And there we go. We have ourselves a wing. Awesome. Okay, we are back and the wings are in a good spot. Looking awesome. Now it's time to go ahead and get these hinge covers in place so that we can move on and never have to look back. And so they just go on there like that. It could be a little bit better. It seems to kind of want to right up just a bit. Nothing too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and tack these in front and back first. Make sure they're happy there. 
And then we're gonna just run the bead right along the edge here. Same on the other side. Just basically sit here for a minute. Like we might be getting a little bit of something something grabbing right in here so we're gonna boost that a step okay Kind of very gently nudge this over a little bit to the inside. And then... Cool. They are on. <clears throat> so with that, the uh, true pain of the wings is pretty much sorted out. Sweet. Sweet.